Okay, today I'm going to work on this particular problem. This is an equations of motion problem uh, using rectangular coordinates. And what we have here is a cart uh, with a box on it. It's being pulled to the right with a force of 200 newtons. Um, there's 1.5 meters between the box and the edge of the cart. Um, if a force of 200 newtons is applied to the 30 kilogram cart, show that the 20 kilogram block A will slide on the cart. Also determine the time for the block A to move on the cart 1.5 meters. The coefficient of static and kinetic friction between the block and the cart are uh, mu s equals 0.3 and mu k equals 0.25. Both the, the cart and the block start from rest. Okay, so what we're going to imagine here is if we pull this um, cart with this force, there's a possibility that the friction, uh, the coefficient of static friction between the uh, box or the block and the cart will not be enough to hold the block in that location will start to slide. And if it does start to slide, then mu k will take effect. And then when they want to know how, um, um, let me see, how much time it will take for this um, block to slide to the very edge. Okay, so let's go ahead and start this problem. We're going to use the standard method, which uh, the steps that um, we have talked about previously. And um, <clears throat> this looks okay. It's going to be a little bit crooked here. Okay, so uh, step one, um, well, I'll probably go ahead and kind of redraw this system. Just kind of have it here in front of me. And we're pulling here with 200 newtons. That's our force. And we have a box sitting here. And the distance here is 1.5 meters. So that's how we're starting off. And the box weighs uh, 20 kilograms. And the cart weighs uh, 30 kilograms. Um, mu s is equal to 0 0.3 and UK is equal to 0 0.25. Okay, so our first step is to set up a um, coordinate system and I'm going to set up a just a rectangular coordinate system X horizontal, Y vertical, just uh, pretty much nice, normal. And um, that's the way I expect all of my motions to be happening and I have some normal forces in the vertical direction. Uh, my next thing is set up my free body diagram, my next step, and I have two items. Um, I have a block and a cart, so I'm going to do a free body diagram for both. And interestingly, oops, let me make that a little bit more square like it is in the, in the image. And usually when I have an item sitting on another item or pressing on another item, I like to kind of put them in the same orientation that they are, but separate them so I can see the forces that interact between them. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here. And um, <clears throat> in this particular case, uh, let's see what we're going to have here. I'm going to do the free body diagram from both of these items. And so here is my block. And acting on that, there should, well, let's start with our cart. Um, acting on the cart, since I removed it from the ground, so the wheels, but I separated it from the ground, I should have a normal. I'm going to call that normal one, because there's also going to be a normal associated with the block. Um, and a weight force uh, associated here for this cart. And I just so scoot it over a little bit so I have some room here to work. And that weight force is MBG. And I should have a friction force. Um, that friction force keeps the block moving with me. So the friction force acts this way on the block and equal and opposite on the cart. And so whenever we separate items, we have these equal and opposite forces happening. Um, there should be a normal um, keeping this block sitting on the cart. And I'm going to call that N2, which means there'll be an N2 going down on the cart. And, of course, we have that 200 uh, Newton force going out that way. And a uh, weight force also on our block, MAG. Okay. And so now I've captured all of my forces. Now I'm ready to do my kinetic diagram. And so I'm going to put the 3 here. 
you know, put the kinetic diagrams right before it. Now the kinetic diagrams are equal to these free body diagrams, so that's why I'm putting this equal sign here. Here's A, and here is my um, cart. And I expect my cart's going to head off in this direction. So I'm going to put A, M, B, A, B here. And um, also for my, um, ooh, this is an interesting situation actually. Um, for my cart, I really should have Well, let's turn our attention to us first work on um, this little guy up here, the block. So here we're going to have a M A A. Now the acceleration that it's going to have is first of all the acceleration given to us by the cart's motion, but also we have this kinetic force M A equal to A A with respect to B. Now if there is no sliding of this guy, of the block with respect to the cart, then AA with respect to B will be zero because again, AA, I've said this before, that's what I'm saying again, I haven't said it today, but um, a, AB is equal to AA minus AB, and if these two are the same, then this guy is zero, okay? Um, and in that case, then this block is just accelerating with the acceleration AB. Okay, so now we have both of our kinetic diagrams set up. We got our equal sign showing that this free body diagram here for the cart is equal to the free body, the kinetic diagram we show here. And as you see on the free body diagram, we have various forces. Um, it's important to note that wherever we have um, a force in the intersection between these two bodies, we have equal and opposite situation going on. So N2 goes up here, N2 goes down here. Force of friction goes this way to move this block this direction, and the force of friction goes the opposite way on the cart. Okay, so equal and opposites here. Um, we also have both weight forces, and again, I just scooted this weight force over a little bit to the left here, um, even though it really kind of applies right there in the middle. And we're treating all of these items as particles, so the fact that we have more length here. Um, than we do here is of no consequence. That's why it doesn't matter that we've made this weight force a little bit um, to the left in this case. For our kinetic diagrams, the interesting one really is going on right here because what we have to show is that not only is um, there perhaps a acceleration of this block that's gonna be the same as the acceleration of the cart, but if it's sliding, then the two accelerations are different, in which case there's an acceleration of A with respect to B or an acceleration of with respect to the cart. So that's a possibility there. And so that's great. We have forces on our free bodies and we have forces M times A on our kinetic diagram. Our next step is going to be the equations of motion. Now by equations of motion we're talking about the sum of forces equals MA. So first we'll look at our cart which is B. It's body B. And uh, in the X direction um, so that's the sum of forces in X is equal to MAX. Uh, we have the following items uh, for our cart. We have 200, that's in the positive X direction. And we have a force of friction, it's in the negative X direction. And when I say negative X direction, I'm saying negative into, with respect to the direction that I call positive, which I've drawn here in my first step. And all of that's going to be equal to what we have here. So that's going to be MBAB. And for our y direction, um, in the y direction we have the weight force, that's down. We have a N2, which is also down. We have an N1, which is up. And what is that equal to? That is equal to, there's no y-related 
kinetic forces, and so we'll have a zero there. And if we look at our unknowns, I'm just going to write unknowns here. See how many unknowns we have. So we have a force of friction that's unknown. We have an AB that's unknown. And down here, we have an N2 and an N1. So it looks like we're dealing with about four unknowns. So we're going to need more equations so far. We just have two. But we do have to consider the box. And so next, we'll focus on the box, which is body A. And we'll do an X for that. Now, in the X direction on the box, we have a force of friction. And that's the only thing in our free body diagram that's in the X direction. And that's going to be equal to over here. We have MA. And it's multiplied times an AB. And also an AAB. And for our Y direction, we have an N2 minus an MAG weight force equal to, and on the kinetic diagram over here, we have nothing in the Y direction. And so we have added. Um, in terms of unknowns, an A, A, B, and an N2 was already there, force friction. So we have one, two, three, four, five uh, particular unknowns, but we only have four equations, so we need to bring in an additional um, unknown, I mean an additional equation. And so what could that equation be? One possibility for an, uh, another equation is the fact that we have said that there's going to be, um, well, we're looking to see if there's no slipping. So let's say uh, we can get an additional equation from, additional equation from no slipping um, assumption. And by that I mean that A, A, B is going to be zero. And so that gives us, that takes away this unknown. And if we take away that unknown, then we have one, two, three, four unknowns, and we have one, two, three, four equations. So with all of those items, we can solve. And let's go ahead and solve. So we're solving equations one through four. So let me just number these equations. So we have equation one, equation two, equation three, and equation four. So those are our four equations. And we're going to solve. Solve um, equations one through four for our unknowns. So when we do that, um, we find the following values. Um, we find that a a b. And I'm not actually doing the actual solving, done that previously, but you can solve the um, uh, four equations and four unknowns. We find that AB is equal to four, and that's going to be meters per second squared. And the force of friction that we end up with is going to be equal to 80 newtons. Now, um, with that force of friction of 80 newtons, what we need to do is now check to see. We need to check or verify our um, verify our previous assumption. No slip. Now, how do we verify no slip assumption? Well. If there's not going to be any slip, then our force of friction must remain less than or equal to mu s n. Because that's the largest that the force of friction um, due to the static coefficient of friction can be. It can't be any larger than this value. If it gets to be larger than that, then it is actually slipping. So we, um, when we solved, we were able to determine what that n was. And I don't think I mentioned uh, what that value of n was, and this actually should be n2, just to be specific. And that n2 was determined also when we solved for these equations, and that n2 was found to be 196.2 newtons. And so when we plug that in, we'll have our 
uh, coefficient of static friction was way up here at the top is 0 0.3 and 196.2 newtons and so what we find there is um, 58.86 uh, I believe 0.86 newtons now 58.86 is not um, greater than 80 and so our assumption is not valid so our no slip it was not valid okay so since the, our no slip assumption was not valid then this additional equation which we brought in here uh, cannot be used this was not an, not a valid choice for that um, fifth equation. So instead, the fifth equation becomes, and let me see, um, that fifth equation becomes um, the fact that we are sliding or that the force of friction is going to be equal to mu k in. Right? So now, since we're sliding, we're going to use the coefficient of kinetic friction. So when we bring in that value, this becomes our fifth equation, so I'm going to call this equation five. So again, one, two, three, four, five equations and unknowns. One, two, three, four. And now this is an actual unknown. So we're going to bring this back as a b. That's an actual unknown now. It's no longer taken away as it was before when we made it equal to zero. Um, it's back as an actual unknown. But one, two, three, four, five unknowns and one, two, three, four, five equations. I'm sorry that slipped off the camera. One, two, three, four, five equations. So we have five equations, five and so we can go ahead and solve. And uh, what we find in this case is that AB we find that our AB is equal to five point zero three meters per second squared our a a b is equal to negative oops negative 2.58 meters per second squared um, and I think our force of friction is equal to um, 49 point oh five Newtons. And let's see, is there anything else that we have found? I think this is it. And um, so we found a force friction AB, AAB, which we can now add these two and find AA if we desire. Um, and our normals would have been found also using, um, using this method of solving. But that's not the end of our problem because we were asked to find that if indeed it is sliding, then how long does it take to slide this 1.5 meters? Okay. Well, that's not too bad. That's more of a kinetic um, question, a kinetic um, equation question. So that's like a fifth step. And I'm going to put this is a, a kinetic um, thing that we're looking at here. And the equation that we have that relates distance um, and acceleration um, is simply that we have S not plus b not t plus one half a t squared. Make sure these look like t's. Okay, and so really we need to find the t. We know how far, how long s is. S is equal to 1.5 meters. We're starting at zero. Our initial velocity was zero. We started at rest, and uh, one half. Now the acceleration that we have to use is the acceleration that exists between the two. This is the relative acceleration. So that's going to be 2.58 uh, meters per second squared and we have our t squared and so when we solve for that we find that our t we're solving for t and we find that that time is equal to 1.078 seconds and so that's how much time it will take for the box to slide from here all the way over to the edge taking up that 1.5 meters and that's the conclusion of our problem I just want to add a few uh, quick words about it. One of the really important things to note here is that um, when we set up our free body diagram for a multi-body system, um, 
we will often separate those two bodies, right? Making them free bodies, but we have to include those normals and any other forces that interact between the two. And those are gonna act in equal and opposite directions. When we go to set up our kinetic diagram, you may notice here, that I always include this equal sign because what we see here is equal to what we see there because again, the sum of the forces equals MA. The MA items are over here in our kinetic diagram and then some of the forces are always over here in our free body uh, side, free body diagram side. Notice also when we came to doing our kinetic forces, right? We have our regular forces over here, we have our kinetic force here. Um, notice for M, uh, I'm sorry, for this kinetic force we have MB times AB. We did not, for example, include, we did not say MB plus MA times AB. We did not write that. Now, you may wonder, well, shouldn't the kinetic force here include what was um, the mass of the box and therefore including both of the masses here? Well, it kind of does if you consider that the normal N2 impinges here. So if you go down, remember when we were doing the um, cart, um, N2 comes into play. Oh, oops, I should be looking at the X. Um, this AB